What real estate brokerage should you join? On this episode of RVA Real Estate Talk, episode 27, we're going to do a deep dive into things you should consider before joining your first or maybe second real estate brokerage. You're listening to RVA Real Estate Talk with Jared Davis and Galen Parker, your source for an honest, insightful look into Central Virginia's real estate market. Combined, Jared and Galen have over 20 years sales experience, as well as hundreds of testimonials from clients past and present who rely on them for advice and assistance when buying and selling homes in today's incredibly hot and competitive real estate market. And now, your hosts, Jared Davis and Galen Parker. I am Jared Davis. And I am your realtor's favorite realtor, Galen Parker. Man, you were going to wear that tagline out, 2022. My that's who I am. Why are you why are you okay. your realtor's favorite realtor? Here's I, I've got a system in place when it comes to a real estate transaction. I long ago realized that some of the issues in a transaction, it's the agent. A hundred percent. It's the agent posturing. It's the agent overly defending. And I, I realized that you know what? If you two just acted like civil, trained, licensed professionals, this would make it all so much better for everyone involved. And so that is my goal. Even when the other person is not being that way, I want it to be said that when they're done, I want them to be like, you know what? I like the guy. That was my favorite realtor. And it goes from the initial offer. Yep. It is before the offer. It's when I schedule a show yeah. to the offer to inspections and even the closing gift that I get the other realtor. I get you a gift. <laughs> well, and here's the thing. You know, obviously, we run a real estate team out of Richmond, Virginia, but it's our goal to help real estate agents grow. That's why we do this podcast. That's what we help do is business build with agents and teams all across the country. So that tagline rings true on so many levels, right? We want to be that realtor when you listen to us and you reach out to us. You say, we want your help. Help us to grow wherever we're at. That's it. We are your realtor's favorite realtor. We want to change the lives of realtors around us, not just our buyers and sellers. And if you're interested in doing that, go ahead and hit that subscribe, Ooh. that like button, that follow button, do all the buttons. Yep. And if you're local to where we're at, Richmond, Virginia, we also have another channel, Living in Richmond. Uh, we're starting to split those videos off just so that we can focus on real estate training on this channel, as well as our podcast, if you're listening on the audio. And then as far as what we're doing for consumers, uh, food reviews, things like that, that's Living in Richmond, uh, Virginia. Jerry Davis, I've got a really important question for you. I'm ready. How you doing today, buddy? Man, I'm good. I like that shirt. Thank you. I do, I do too. It's one of my newer ones. No pockets at uh, the top. I like it. Oh, what shirt? Oh, you do have pockets. I need pockets. What? I need pockets. Sometimes I get them pocket monogrammed. Oh. Is uh, shirt I, pockets going away? Shirt pockets have been Only away for, for nice shirts when they're like, all right. I'd love to hear your comments on YouTube. All this right, is totally it. on real estate related, but if you could <laughs> if you could comment below if you're watching this, if you're a full grown adult, um, can you one wear a short sleeve dress shirt? Uh, I don't want to bias your comments, but the answer is definitely no. Uh, if you're if you're not twelve, it definitely should be long sleeve. Two, 12. should it have a pocket? What happens if you're hot blooded like me? Like I'm. You like roll your sleeves up, you I, child. I do roll my <laughs> sleeves up, but you, you live in Florida. You live in don't, Florida. No, you don't. No. You, do you cut the legs off of your suit in the summer and wear shorts? <laughs> no. You wear pants like an adult, Mike. That's that's the answer. Okay. Here, here are some here are some opportunities <laughs> in which you can wear a short sleeve dress shop. Uh, you're a cop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're selling insurance. Oh, why? That's pretty much it. Those are the only two people. They got pockets and like right, they got the here's shorts the pocket and stuff. thing. Here's the again. I, I'm, I'm on team pocket. I need your YouTube comments. If you have a shirt like this that's got like a nice wide collar, right? And you got the collar stays and things like that. This is a dress dress shirt. No pockets. Not a thing. Now, if you have something that's more casual, maybe it buttons up here. Maybe it's a little more flannel like. Maybe you could wear it with like some nice jeans, but and it's more of a casual button up definitely pocket but if i'm if i'm gonna wear suit jackets and stuff over it it's like a dress shirt no pockets and and mike for love god no short sleeve shirts what about if you're wearing like uh i don't know shorts and a, a button shirt a long sleeve shirt or a short short sleeve shirt Sh shorts and like uh, this shirt like i would put shorts on with this shirt no, I would never put shorts on no, with this no, shirt. No, not that shirt. All right, you mean like a like a casual, right? Dress, like a, right. like a party shirt. Like, are there birds on it? No, solid color. Maybe mm. some pattern. A little pattern. Okay. Um. So, what's the question? Shorts. 
on a button shirt with short sleeves or do you wear a long sleeve with short sleeves? Party shirts so, all day long. Okay, so my, my thought is this. There's really no opportunity to ever wear a short sleeve dress shirt. Mm-hmm. They don't now there are tons mm-hmm. of short sleeve shirts that they might not go to the level like I've got short sleeve shirts mm-hmm. that are buttoned up. I have a and then lot. I've got short sleeve party shirts. I put those in totally different categories. Okay. I've got party shirts, which I use to go to the party. And then I got other shirts. <laughs> um, I feel like we're way off topic, but this is important with us. Yeah. Um, and this I, is we real better, estate fashion. Wait, we need at least a YouTube can, comment on can, this. Can, so you better you post are. about this on, on Facebook. You better post about <laughs> this. This will definitely be a I want a poll. That would be the, the most slanted poll in America. If I was like, hey guys, is it okay to wear a short sleeve dress shirt? I'm like, they'd be like, They're, I don't know. I don't have any friends. All the 12 year olds would be like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and like, all the guys over seventy, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know. And the thing is, they never like. It's like whoever the maker is of short sleeve dress shirts are like, don't tailor the sleeves in at all. Just cut off the long sleeve, and so. And then you have these giant sleeves. So anytime you watch somebody with a short sleeve dress shirt, the sleeves are like giant. They don't fit them in at all, and you, you just look like a child. You, it looks ridiculous. Can we go to the deep dive now? I don't even remember what we're talking about today. We are talking about... You brought us here. I know. Hey, Mike, and deep dive us. It. Give us our music. Let's jump into topics before we, we lose people on dress shirts. This is actually perfect. This is when short sleeve dress shirts were okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> you didn't say detective. You didn't say cheap, cheap armchair detective. I didn't get a chance. I'm so mad right now. All right, let's funnel into this thing, Mike. All right, Galen. Hey, the, to- the topic at hand: Which real estate broker should I join? Now, again, this is something that comes up a lot with us. We get a lot of calls on a weekly basis. Our team is growing. We had about five agents last year. We're on track to probably have about forty agents on team by uh, the end of next year. So that's probably within about what thirty six months to go yeah. from five to forty agents. That's about where we're tracking right Correct. this second. And what I've found is that we've brought agents over. Most of the time, they reach out to us, and we hope that you'll reach out to us as well if you're looking for help and brokerage help. But uh, we've brought people from local brokerages, uh, people like Napier and Hometown, things like that in Richmond. But then major brokerage, Keller Williams, Long and Foster, Remax, a lot of the big boys. They've also shifted over, and so. What we find is that most of the time, if you're moving, it's because a need is not being fulfilled, right? There's something there that you're saying, I thought I was going to get this at this brokerage, and I'm not getting it. So if you're a new agent or if you're somebody that's at a brokerage, there's probably a pain point. We thought this podcast would be good for you, right? Before you join a brokerage or before you move to another brokerage, uh, really, what should you be looking for in a broker, and who's going to serve that need the best, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's where I'm at. I think uh, it, you, you almost have to ask yourself, what do you need? Mm-hmm. Just like any other major decision, how is this going to affect me in the long term? Yeah. How is this going to affect me in the short term? What what investment am I making in myself? What investment will they make in me? Once you have the clear <laughs> understanding of those questions, then you can say, all right, now which brokerage is going to be the best for me? Without having the answer, you're just out there in the wind. So so whether you're a new agent or if you're an agent that's already with a brokerage and you're experienced or you're building a team, I want you to think right now, what are the top three to five things that I need in a brokerage? And I, I want you that. to think about it. I love it. that. I'm going to give you like 10 seconds to think about it. We need some 10-second music. We'll, we'll, we'll add that later. Yeah. All right. That's going to be edited in. Mike's running over to try to get music right this second. We're going to let Eddie do this later. All, All right. right. You got it? Now, me and Galen are going to name three to five things. We're going to talk about them. And we're going to see, did we get those five things or three things that you thought about? How many of the things that we mentioned are things okay. that you thought of, right? I love it. All right. I'm going to let you go first. You give me one. The number one thing that I thought about is... Team support. Okay. I like that. Team support. So some a tie, but yes. Yeah, so I guess I guess all right, so that's a that's an interesting one to start on because again, depending on who you are, if you're listening to this, if you're a new agent you got to be figuring, do I want to go solo or do I want a team up front, right? Mm-hmm. Or if you're uh, someone that's like us, that's growing a team, then I guess what you have to be thinking about, if this, if this is one of the biggest thing agents are looking for, then how am I going to be supporting all of those people on our team? 
Now, that, that kind of stretches beyond broker stuff, but it, it is probably broker-related because there's a lot of brokerages out there that just aren't big on teams, right? There's, That's what I was thinking. There's some brokerages that are like, we don't do the team thing. We're just a bunch of solo agents, boutiques. And then other brokerages out there, like Keller Williams prides itself on yeah. being a team-building brokerage. And the reason why I even thought about that, because if you would have asked me... Maybe a year ago, I would have had it. This is not really like an order, but it's the first thing that popped in my head. It's not order of importance for me personally. But I just was speaking with so many agents that were just like, real estate's a lonely business. Whether you're new or whether you've been in the business for a hot minute. One of my buddies, Nate, um, he's on our team. I've known Nate for since 2007. Um, he was like the 2016 Richmond Rookie of the Year. So he's got some experience. You know, he, he knows what he's doing. But his thing was he wanted to be on a team because he liked doing crazy things like going on vacations. <laughs> yeah. He Insane. liked, yeah, he liked, you know, crazy thought as a realtor. You know, he had more than one client at a time. He had more than four clients at a time. And there's only so many odd days or hours in a day. And so he's like, all right, I need to be able to call someone and be like, hey, listen. Can you help me out? Can you do me a solid? Can you show me a house? Can you help me with this? When he was by himself, or he was on a team, but it was he was mostly by himself, he struggled with that because he was just like, I'm getting burned out so much. And hmm. that is why I was like, man, we're talking more and more agents. They're just like, I want this to be my career, but I don't want it, this thing to just consume me to the point where I'm like hating my existence. Yeah. I like that. I, that that was not going to be in my top three, but it, it now that you say that, it really is. If you're looking for a brokerage, you really do need to figure out, am I solo or am I on a team? And if you're going to be solo, you got to figure out, are you going to get that same support out of the brokerage that you would out of a team? Or do you need to maybe pay some heavier splits into a team to get that support you need? Yeah. And two, if you're listening to this and you're building a team and you're saying, well, how do I build an incredible team that's going to support our agents and you need help? Again, feel free to reach out to us. We've gone from five agents to 24 agents within 12 months, and we're scaling up to 40 agents in the next 12 months. And so we are helping people build. We are building out full-fledged systems for people uh, so that they'll have training for agents as they onboard, training for agents as they're doing contracts for the first time. We are literally trying to be a one-stop shop to help train your team as well. Uh, to really grow this thing across the country. So, I love that you put that because it's like not only are we going to train you to train your team, <laughs> we're actually going to help just train your team. We will. We're, we're probably doing about four training sessions a week right this second on Zoom live. Um, so anybody that's kind of in our network, we've been essentially just helping people grow. We did one on open house since yesterday, and half of our great half one. of our team was on so there. Proud just, of them. It's great. Anyways, so that's number one, team support. Okay. Number two, I'm going to throw out number two. Let's see if you guys were thinking about this. Training. Ooh, perfect segue. Right? Because again, whether you are a new agent, experienced, whatever it is, training is going to be big. If you've been in the business for two decades, maybe you don't need the training and support as much. Okay. There's plenty of people that are like, I've been in this business since 1948, though. And I'm like, you could use some training. But <laughs> the, here's, here's oh, the thing this is where me. it's twofold. If you're new, you need the training. And a lot of the agents that come on board our team have called us because, simply put, they say, I thought I was going to get training and support from my broker, and I've gotten nothing. I haven't been able to get them on the phone. They're never in the office. When I needed help on a contract, it was Saturday night, and they're like, you know, call me Monday, but houses are selling, you know, by Sunday, right? I can't get these people on. So what kind of training are you going to, to get? Now, again... This is going to be subjective for where you're at. There's boutique brokerages that maybe they're very hands-on. But then you got to look at some of the other bigger brokerages. I think about Remax. We were there for eight, nine years before we moved. Remax, while it had a little bit going on, to me was not a brokerage that was built around new agent training. I was always kind of told that Remax was the place you landed if you were already an experienced agent because, you know, we could pay them. 12, 13, 1400 bucks a month and get a 95 5 split. It was a high desk fee. You wouldn't be able to afford it if you were a new agent, but if you were established and you just wanted a great split, you could kind of go there and it would be good. Whereas you look at something like Keller Williams and they put you on a mentorship program, right? When you come in, you're going to pay some of your splits out and stuff like that. 
but they're they're really trying to focus on getting you trained. Long and Foster is another one that I would think of as being again maybe office specific on how much training you're going to get, but not as much of Brokerage the classes specific, going yeah. on. Keller Williams has a lot of those programs that they've done. EXP obviously is where we're at. We're doing I think it's about 50 hours online a week now of training. Uh, and that's just within EXP. So if you're in the country or out of the country, uh, you hop right into EXP World, and there's constant class. We just I mean, you you got. Uh, I it's was crazy. hoping you're about to admit, Grand, mention, Grand Cardone. Yeah, I, it. I was like, like I we got about to Grand, Grand Cardone's Cardone. on board right now. So Grand Cardone is doing training sessions specifically for EXP agents, which has been incredible. Um, it, it, that's been it's been nonstop, and and really just with us, we've been building out. Uh, we're building out a suite in Kunjabi right this second outside of the EXP itself again for those training seminars and training modules and things like that and then we're doing our own zoom things as well so i think i started definitely in the past year or so starting to shudder violently when i talk to an experienced agent they're like oh i don't really need training anymore so okay so let me preface my second thing on training when you're experienced agent time and time again we do deals right where we have an agent that will come to us and say something Let's just say idiotic. But let's let's just use the word moronic. Idiotic. Moronic. Uh, w- stupid. Stupid. Sure. And, and they'll say, "I talked to my broker about this, and oh. he's confirmed that I'm right." <laughs> So there are so many times, uh, like there's a brokerage that I will not name that always puts the designated agency agreements in the MLS. Okay. And the amount of times I get new agents that are like, why are there designated agency agreements in here? Do we need this? And I'm like, no, we absolutely do not need it. For some reason, they feel the need to give every broker their designated agency agreements, right? And it just comes up. We had an agent the other day, our contracts, again, y'all are in different states, but our contracts have something that states, this is your inspection timeline. And if you don't fill it in, it's 10 days. If left blank. If left blank, then it defaults to 10 days. It's in the exact sentence. Right, that's a pretty clear statement. Right. So Mike, you're not a realtor. <laughs> if you left that blank, how many days do you have? Yell it out if you know. Oh, that's right. He's running to the mic. Sorry. We gotta I've get never seen to the this mic. man move so fast. Three? Ten. Ten. Ten days. Wow. Ten days, Mike. You got ten days. Ten days. If this agent like. says, nope, broker can't have it. I can't have it. Got to have ten days in this thing. That's the only way this contract is going to work. It's amazing. And you're like, did, did you read it? What happened? <laughs> we had another one a while back where... Uh, we had an oil tank issue. Again, I don't know how your oil tank laws are, but we have inspection periods, and this the buyer has to do the inspection. If there's something wrong, then they can ask for us to fix it, but they can't ask for us to inspect it. And this agent was adamant that we needed to pay for all of the inspections and have it fixed. And I said, you're wrong. The contract strictly states a buyer cannot ask a seller to do inspections. And then who calls me? The broker. The broker. Oh, I'm right. That's I talked to the broker. He's right. So here's the thing. Training for new agents is crucial. But if you have a broker that doesn't even know what they're doing, then I would say it's crucial that even if you're experienced, you find a new brokerage. Yeah. Because you don't want someone fighting losing battles for you. <laughs> you don't have two people being wrong. It's just awkward. Yeah. <laughs> I was also thinking, think of training like investing in yourself. So when someone says, oh, I don't need you training, I, I just hear I'm not investing in myself. Because I feel like I'm a pretty good salesperson. I still take sales training classes. I'm not going to go to Grand Cardone and be like, hey, listen. I got this. I listen to multiple books a month. Uh, nonstop. Seminars. We've been to, I mean, two EXP seminars this year. We did the EXP con in Vegas. We did a build conference down in Texas. And I, I the, my biggest sadness is that there's two build conferences a year, a shareholder summit and an EXP conference. And I just don't think I can get to all four. And I wish I could because every single time we go to one, we come back and we're like so pumped, pumped right? Um, it, it's insane. I so, think that like a sword, it's like there's a reason why you sharpen the sword, right? Yeah, yes, it cut the last time you swung it, but I mean, every time you use it, you got to yep. sharpen it up. Make sure that you are the sharpest sword out there. That's it. So training and then that team support falls in too, right? You're going to get a little more, hopefully, training if you're on a team if you need it. And again, if you're building a team, how do you provide that training? We can help with that. Got it. All right. Third thing, Galen, I'm going to let you throw another out so and, you and, hit and me re- mind. And remember, these aren't in leads of importance for me, but I think um, lead feed. 
Man, that is my number three, actually. Where are you getting these leads from? So I actually said leads and systems. Ooh, that's good. Very good. So I think we, we bunched those together for a couple reasons. Um, first of all, most agents, again, this is probably out of the last 10 agents we've recruited that onto our team, not necessarily outside of that building their own teams, but the people that have come to the Davis Group to work for us and with us. Um, probably about 70% of them, 7 out of 10, would say one of the biggest things that they're looking for is some kind of lead flow. Now, most people, when they get fresh into the business, isn't it true that most agents think, oh, I'm going to join a brokerage and their job <laughs> is to provide me with leads and make me successful? Absolutely. I think most people think that. I mean, I thought that when I got my license like, almost yeah, a decade ago. Some leads. I'm going to run like, them down. That's it. I'm going to be I the said, best running down the leads that they hand me. 100%. I said REMAX fees are expensive. When I, when I was joining Naturally. that brokerage, I was like, hey, man, if I could get just a couple leads to cover those fees for the year, I'd be totally cool. Didn't really happen, but... But that doesn't matter. At the end of the day, you get to figure out, all right, is there a brokerage that will generate leads and sure. give me leads, right? And so some will not. Some you're just on your own, right? But others, maybe the brokerage itself is doing Zillow leads, Realtor leads, Home.com leads. Um, shout out to Mike Hogan in our area. Um, dude runs a team and a brokerage. So he left, I believe, Keller Williams to start just the Hogan group. And you can be a solo agent with them or you can be a team agent with them. And, you know, they run Google Flex or Zillow Flex, sorry. And they run a bunch of other softwares and they lead in for their agents. And I use him as an example just because he's one of the few people that is actually a broker as well as the team that is lead ginning for his clients, right? But then you also have to think, okay, our, this is why the systems come in. If they're doing any kind of leads, are they do with them? are they giving me a CRM or a client management system that tracks them? Right, Ylopo or not Ylopo? Sorry, Sierra, <laughs> uh, Boomtown, Follow Up Boss, Follow Up Boss. Any of these things, because as you start getting leads, if somebody's handing them to you on a sticky note and you have no CRM. It's going to be very hard. Keep track of this. Yeah, like it's going to be very hard for you to do it or you have to you have to expense it yourself if you don't. And then on top of that, there's typically action plans, there's follow-ups, there's artificial intelligence, there's other softwares that are built into these support systems. And what I've found is that a lot of brokers either don't have any CRM. Most agents we talk to are like, we don't have a CRM of any kind. Which is scary to me. It's terrifying. I don't even know how you do business without it. But other people are like, yes, we have a CRM. It's very basic. We can input names in there. And I'm like, well, can you put reminders? Are there action plans? Is I it, need reminders. Is it I mean, built into got... your email? Is it built into your phone number? Can you leave set voicemails? And most Ooh. of the time, the answer is no. So you have to figure, if you're going to be a successful agent, you have to be set up for success. You can't just assume you're going to go out and it's just going to all work out for you. So, you need those reminders because it doesn't matter how great your memory is. Yeah. It's like, you know, as you progress in the business, heaven forbid you're successful, but then you got all these leads coming in. You're trying to remember like dates and yep. what they told you and call me back in three months and then home anniversaries, wedding anniversaries. It's like that CRM is the maker break. I mean, that thing's your best friend. I mean, that's a part of your business. Yeah. And you need him to, or her, yeah. him or her, yeah. to yeah. tell you, hey, Call Mike right now. Remind Mike this. It's their anniversary. They said they want to look. Spring's coming. They yep. How many months does it take for them to work on their lender? You know information. So yeah. So CRMs are huge. Systems. I think uh, you know some broker. Most brokers have nothing. Some brokerages will give you some kind of access. Um, we use Sierra. Just throwing that out there for people. Yeah. If you have any questions we about used to Sierra, use Boomtown. Uh, no, we, Sierra, we've used Boomtown in the past. EXP actually gives you KV Core for free. We were just using Sierra when we moved, and so we've just we kept it when we did that but if you're a solo agent you can actually come into exp run kv core for free and they actually just have set it and forget it drip campaigns for ads so you can put a budget on it of 100 bucks 45 bucks 200 bucks whatever a fourth thing i'm gonna throw this one out okay. it's my turn so i hope you have a fifth because we said three to five <laughs> but this one's been huge for us and it's been huge for me, and it's been what I think is probably the single biggest thing for, for me and our move over to EXP, and that is proximity. Ooh, that's a very good one. Now, you may say, what are you talking about? Proximity to what? Well, in Remax, we were the number one producer out of that office. We started to build the number one team out of that office, and it's hard to think about moving up when you're already the number one. 
The other agents in the office aren't there to really help you grow, especially when you're already number one, because if you're like, hey, give me this system that you're doing for dialers or leads or expireds or FISBOs, they're like, I don't want to help you. You're already beating us, or I don't want to help you because you could beat us if you incorporate this, or you'd, you'd start taking my leads, right? This all the things. This all is of my these gym. things. When we moved to EXP, the door kind of opened for me personally. Um, when when I came in, we were doing less than, I mean, at the time we were really small. I was probably doing around under thirty million in sales, probably. 20 ish personally and then we had the team that was just getting started so they were starting to turn sales up uh within about a year of coming into exp we had cranked that up to 40 million dollars in sales uh this year we've done over 50 million we're not even at the end of the year yet i think we're at like 52 or 53 million uh, by next year we should be 75 million and then we're building into a hundred million dollar team and it, it should be easily accessible in the next 24 months but the reason that i was able to do that is because when i came in uh, somebody that was already doing over a hundred million dollars a year uh, was the one that brought me into exp and they gave me all of their systems and they said this is exactly what we're doing and it opened my eyes it made me realize holy crap i'm doing so much of this wrong uh if we just tweaked this and that we would be killing it and i would have never known that had i just stayed where i was at because i was the number one whatever so you're a big fish in this little pond and you feel like you're a big fish and you're like great this this pond's tiny look how big i am compared to all these other fish then you move over and all of a sudden you're like oh my gosh you just threw me in the ocean and now i'm talking to people that are doing a billion dollars a year in commercial sales or that are doing you know 700 800 transactions a year you know a thousand plus transactions a year and it opens your mind on how possible it is and so the biggest thing for me has been proximity i like proximity because you've got agents who are new in the business who have n they just they've got no clue and here are some guys that are just like just behemoths and they're willing to just be like oh this is what i did they're willing to sit down with them they're willing to have the, you know it's egos get checked at the door and I, I, that's why i like proximity so much because it's like man this guy's doing eight times what I'm doing, but I want to be there. And he's always been willing to be like, yeah, come on, let, come, let's have, come to my house. A hundred percent. So like for us now, we've got multiple teams that we're helping to build up to where we're at. You know, most people that are, we're small, either a solo agent or they had a couple buyer's agents. And we said, look, scale is the name of the game. If you can get to 10 plus buyer's agents, uh, or we should just say showing our, our really sales agents, because most of them are, are buying and selling agents. Now the kind of the buyer listing agent thing is kind of dying i feel like in the team environment at least for us i don't think it works that well uh, we let our agents buy and sell um, but to be able to help them get to that 10 agents that's when people really start to crest over and start to see the growth because there's enough agents there to support and help and everything else so anytime we sit down with a team and they're like well i've got one buyer's agent but i think i probably need one or two more i'm always like i would venture to say you need at least eight or nine more <laughs> and and it's much easier to scale that way because the systems will come in place the support will come in place it's easier to lead in for that many people than just add for one guy and then he doesn't work out or he lead or Start whatever all over again, yeah. so so the proximity to say look we can help you build your team to whatever size do you you want a hundred million dollar team? We'll help you build it. You want a two hundred dollar, a two hundred million dollar team? We'll help you build it. I mean, we're scaling to the point where I think within twenty four months we'll be doing anywhere from three hundred to four hundred transactions a year. And if you had told me that we were going to be a three to four hundred transaction a year team five years ago, three years ago, I'd have told you how. I don't, <laughs> I don't see it. I'm out here running around like crazy trying to sell houses. I don't know if I could sell another house. And I think one of the the cool things that we've done for a lot of teams is just kind of like helping them in the beginning of just saying like hey listen what what do you want from your team because a lot of times i think people they're like i want to build a team and then they're just like grabbing at agents and it's like man this is not a great culture fit for you yeah so we're helping teams sit and like all right start one what will be the culture of your team what is your culture that you want what are some things and principles and values that are good to you and then once we have yeah. them write all those things down we're like all right great now let's find people who are inside of this square. Because if you find people outside the square, Jared can tell you, any agent can tell you that when someone doesn't agree with your values and culture of your team, they are not going to stick around or they're going to be like a stick in the mud and eventually 
you know, disappear. And we've had that on our team where people are just like, yeah, I don't know if I want to do this. And we're just like, hey, that's fine. And what happens? They fizzle out, they disappear, they leave. And so yep. you need that in the beginning. But sometimes people don't know to have that conversation. So proximity is how that's going to benefit you. Why core values matter. That'll be another another video we do at some point because it's one of the biggest things to building a, a solid team. And again, proximity, keep this in mind. We're not just talking about teams because you're talking about what brokerage to join. So just keep in mind, if you're doing solo or you're building your own team, you probably want to be at a brokerage. This is the whole point that has proximity to people that are crushing it, that are doing better than you are. And if you're the top guy at your brokerage, if you're sitting here right now and you're listening to this and you're saying, I'm, I am the number one guy at my brokerage, either you're doing like a billion dollars in sales or you should probably call us and we can we can really dream you bigger. A hundred percent. You know what I mean? I don't care what you're doing. If you're doing 200 deals a year, like you can go bigger. And so wherever you're at, if you're capping or you feel like I'm doing 20 deals a year, I should be doing 40. I'm doing 50 deals a year. I should be doing 100. I'm doing 100 deals a year. I should be doing 300. Whatever it is. It, you can do it. I mean, mo- there's people in our network that are literally working on, you know, making sure that they're doing thousands of deals a year in the next couple of years. And that's giant to think about. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think, I mean, who knows? I, I don't think we're going to be that team that builds to 2,000 deals a year. I just, I don't think scale wise, I want to be that team. <laughs> I was like, we value our time. Yeah. And, and, but I mean, most of the time you're automating it to the point where you, you're, you are going to be out of it either way. So power to those people, but we have those people in our network. So if that's what you want to build, if you want to build a 2,000 deal a, a year team, we got, we got a guy, a guy for you. Yeah. So uh, that's my fourth. Do you have a fifth? You will, Do we have I, one I got, more before we wrap this so up? So my fifth was actually broker call. Culture and we kind of just dove right into that. But okay. that's my, you know, evaluating broker culture and just seeing what, anytime you've got a broker where they're like, oh, well, that's not our thing, just run away from them. <laughs> if you've got a plan in place, whether it's be a team or whatever, and your broker's like, yeah, I don't, we don't do that here. That's a clear indication that their culture is not adhered to, adhered to yours. And we just talked about it. Yeah. All right. So, so now looking back. Were those the things you guys thought about? Were you team support, training, lead systems, proximity, culture? Hopefully, hopefully some of that struck home with you. If we left one off, let Ooh, us know in the comments. Like, let us know, hey, I, I thought about this thing, and we're happy to follow up and give you some feedback on that one as well. Yeah, and, and if we can do anything to help you grow your business, please reach out to us. Uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, you can reach out to us directly. I've, I've put my cell number on a lot of these, and I feel like <laughs> at some point I should stop doing that. But uh, I'll keep going. Hey, Let's hey, keep going for a little hey, while. 804-536-6100 if you want to call me or text me direct. We, we get calls and texts all the time. We love it. Love it. Uh, don't feel weird. You know, we got guys on our team that, like, I'm, we met them off YouTube. Shoot you, me an email. Yeah. Jared, Jared, how do they email you? J-A-R-E-D at Central V-A. That's V-A, Virginia. Realty.com. <laughs> Jared at Central com. You can get Galen at Galen at centralvarealty.com. 804-274-9016. Or if you're looking on me on Instagram, it's your realtor's favorite realtor, RV. Hey. I'm underscore underscore the Davis Group. Again, like and subscribe to this channel. Check out our other channel, Living in Richmond, Virginia. Subscribe to that too. We thank you for listening. This has been another episode of RVA Real Estate Talk. If you have a real estate question that you would like to ask Jared or Galen, reach out to them at Jared at CentralVARealty.com or Galen at CentralVARealty.com. Who knows? It may even be featured on an upcoming episode. 